we certainly give God praise. I have no complaints today. When I think about where I am, I have no complaints. Uh, I was in the early service, and I was uh, telling them how excited seemingly everybody seems to be. But we have forgotten that the end of days is still here. <laughs> and it doesn't matter who's, uh, who's where, God still is on the throne. And the clock is still ticking. Can I get some volume uh, back there if you could, Brother Todd? Uh, uh, the clock is still ticking, Evangelist Jennings. It doesn't matter who's in the White House. All that matters is who's on the throne. And I am more excited than I was two weeks ago of the coming of the Lord. Uh, Daniel's uh, vision of the wings falling off the lion is being fulfilled as we speak. When we think about everybody making peace with Israel, The Bible is fulfilling itself. When everybody looks and says, oh, it's so peaceful, then there's going to be destruction. So I'm grateful for the spirit of the Antichrist is already working. Amen. He got to have his time. I was telling somebody, I said, it's interesting how God even gives the devil some space. I told him I was going to preach that one day, Sister Price. I was going to take that scripture where Jesus was in uh, uh, over uh, with the Dominiac boy in uh, Gadarenes, and he uh, take the swine and put him into, or uh, take the uh, the, uh, the legions and put him into the swine. And 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 I said to uh, as I was as I was reading that text, I said it was a legion, and legions was like six thousand troops, right? A human body can hold that many demons, and it take some 200 swine to go into. I said, even God got mercy for Satan, because he could have took him out then, but he put him in the swine and let him, come on, somebody help me. Amen. He put him in the swine. He said, My, our time coming, you already know you defeated. But he's still delivering us from the devil. Somebody ought to say amen. So we bless the Lord, and we thank God today. We certainly honor the Spirit of Christ. We're grateful to see so many of you. Glad to see Brother Robert back, amen, in his place. Glad to see him, amen, and we're thankful for that too. The Liggins family, certainly we give our deepest condolence and certainly our love for you and the loss of uh, your brother, Sister Price, her twin, and in the loss of Elder Liggins, uh, brother, we're certainly praying, amen, for uh, that family, we're grateful for the service that they provided. And I had a wonderful time listening to the stories that they that they were telling about it. And I thought it was quite interesting. And I, I'll say this and I'll move on into the message. Uh, when you come from the South, it's interesting. It's not unusual for family members to have like the same name, right? That's not unusual because names meant something. You just didn't get a name. A name really defined who you were. And now you give kids names just arbitrarily. We just make up names. We name them unique, and we put a U and an I, an N with a hyphen, and an IE or something just to make it. And why? That's why you would have queen and princess in the same family. Uh, and so when you have names in the family, it means a lot. When someone is named after you, and it means a lot to pass a name on. And so when you see names like that, like in my family was Frederick, and in this family it's James. There's a lot of Jameses in that. That name means a lot. So you just don't give names to your children because you want them to be unique. Give them names because they mean something to somebody. Are y'all with me? Amen. So give names that mean something. Amen. You can... You can create a name. You can just come up with a name and figure out how to spell it. I can spell some more five different ways. 
S Y M O R, S M O R, or C M O R. I can name it. Just I want to be unique, but give children's names that stick and mean something. Because when you hear that name, and as I listen to the stories, I see why they appreciated their life like they did. Because you can't, I don't know about y'all, but I, I, I had coon, and I wasn't that excited about no coon. I'm just going to tell you. I, 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 my f grandfather hunted, too, and I wasn't good about hunting. I wasn't on no hunting dogs, I don't, and, and I wasn't no fisherman, even though we had to go fishing to eat. But uh, that means a lot because it brings back memories as I was a little boy, just to hear those stories and to hear some of the stuff that he would do with his kids, uh, that means a lot uh, because when you didn't have those experiences, that means a lot to see people have that, and you want to give that to your children. So that's very important. So I certainly appreciate what I heard yesterday, for certainly he was truly a man uh, that was committed to God and to his family, and so we thank God for that family. Amen. If you would, let's go to St. Luke. Uh, chapter number nine, we're, uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to uh, uh, mess with something just a little controversial today. Y'all just going to have to bear with me. I'm going to deal with something a little controversial. And, and, and the, 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 the text may not necessarily be a, a, a fit what I'm going to deal with, but as I get into it, hopefully you will understand uh, what, uh, where I'm going with it or what the purpose of it is, if you will. Look at uh, chapter 9, verse number 1. It said, then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power. Somebody say, gave them power and authority over all devils. Somebody say, all devils. To cure, and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And he said unto them, take nothing for your journey. Neither staffs, nor script, neither bread, neither money, neither have two coats apiece. And whatsoever house ye enter into, there abide, and thence depart. And whosoever will not receive you, when ye go out of that city, shake off the very dust from your feet for a testimony against them. And they departed and went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Now Herod, the ter uh, tetriarch, heard of all that was done by him, and he was perplexed because that it was said of some that John was risen from the dead, and of some that Elias had appeared, and of others that one of the old apostles was risen again. And Herod said, John, have I beheaded, but who is this of whom I hear, hear such things? And he desired to see him. You may be seated. And I would like to take my thought from this text. Now Herod, the Tetrarch, heard all that was done by him, and he was perplexed because that it was said of some that John was risen from the dead, and of some that Elias had appeared and of others that one of the old prophets was risen again. And I just want to take this thought or this thing. It's time to confuse the devil. It's time to confuse the devil. It's interesting because the will of God, to be honest with you, is probably the most uncomfortable thing and the most challenging thing that we will all have to experience. To do what God has called and God has expected us to do is uncomfortable. 
The reality of it is, is because it's uncomfortable because our flesh only likes to go a certain distance. But if we're going to do the will of God, it is going to require some death. Somebody say death. It's going to require somebody to die. Uh, somebody's got to die. I, I don't know who it is, but somebody's got to die. In order for me to become the best that I can be, and in order for me to execute the will of God, I have to die. Don't you remember what the Apostle Paul said? says, therefore, mortify the deeds in your body. Amen. We've got to die. It is, to be honest with you, it is functioning every day of our lives that whether we choose to accept it or not, that the will of God is moving. It doesn't matter whether you want to operate in it or whether you choose to. It is going to move. It is going to move. It's going to function. Too many people say they're in the will of God, but they're on the fringes, as I told them this morning. You operate on the fringes because that's comfortable. I can operate on the fringes because I can keep my friends, amen, and, 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 and I can make the church think that I'm okay. But now it's time to really confuse the devil because as long as the devil got you on the fringes, he's really got you. Because in order for me to really operate in the will of God, I've got to die. Somebody say amen. Amen. It is interesting because when we realize that, if you will, we are a part of his plan, it can cause a great deal of confusion. When we realize that God loves us so much that he would choose us to carry his word, to have his spirit, it is confusing because guess what? The Bible says, for me, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The reality of it is, is that why would God give me something that he cherishes so much and to put me in the world and to fight people and spirits and I falter along the way? Why would he do that? Because that's a part of God's will in perfecting you to become like Jesus. Somebody ought to say man. But the reality of it is from time to time, a man, the devil, a man can't get, con the devil is not confused because we operate in a carnal place from a spiritual perspective. Watch this. We operate from a carnal place. In other words, we think our feelings matter more than the spirit of God. I don't know if you realize it, but your feelings have no place in the kingdom of God. Amen. Why do I say that? Because remember, sin comes through lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. All of those things are operated by feeling evangelizing. If I feel like I'm something, it's because I went bought something to make me feel like I'm something. But if I don't have the money to buy that something, do I still feel like I'm something? The reality of it is, yes, because I've been bought with a price. I've been paid for by Jesus Christ. Somebody ought to clap their hands and give God praise in here. Amen, amen. And so sometimes we struggle Amen, because we struggle because there's uh, uh, to accept, amen, this thing, to accept the fact that we are in the will of God. To accept that means that I must let go of my, if you will, my earthly who my earthly self. I have to let go of what everybody else thinks about me and focus on what God says I am. I must focus on the fact that when he pulled me out of darkness and put me into light, he meant to do that. He did not make a mistake. He did not pull me out because he couldn't find nobody else. He picked me out of the crowd, put me in the light and said, live boy, and I want you to live right. Somebody ought to say amen. Now, hallelujah. So if you think about it, amen, the issue, if you will, has become today that people think, amen, that they can control God. But I stopped by to tell you God is in control. I wanted you to know none of us can control God. We can pray and ask God for what we desire, but we must remember if we ask, uh, if we don't ask according to what his will, we will never get it. I want somebody to understand that. Look at your neighbor and say, your prayers may not be the right prayer because it's not in the will of God. If I pray in the will of God, he said he will in no wise, he will always give me what I want. Can I show you what I mean? Delight yourself in 
the Lord, which is his will, and he will give you the desire of your heart. Well, pastor, how do I delight myself? I got to let go of everything that is not like God. I got to deal with who I am. I, I talked about this in the Sunday school session. I told them you got to be like Nehemiah. You got to realize that even though parts of your life lie in a ruin, you must realize that God invested in you for you to take that ruined place and build it upright. Somebody ought to come on and shout glory in here. Amen. And so therefore, because God is in control, uh, the reality of it is, is that his will, uh, amen, is played out out. Amen. While we're sitting in this sanctuary, we are operating in the will of God. Why? You didn't want to come here, but you're here. You didn't plan on coming here, but you got up this morning and God said, go to church. And you came into the sanctuary. Some folks said, well, I'm not going to go to the sanctuary. Amen. But the Lord impressed upon you to go. The reality of it is you're still in his will. But how many of you know that when I don't operate in the will of God, there is always a consequence when I don't. Can I show you what I mean? When the children of Israel refused to follow the expectation of God, when he told them, I'm going to rain down manna on the fifth day, so on the sixth day, you just get enough to on that fifth day to keep you through the Sabbath. Do not get any more because it will spoil, amen, before you get to it. And the Bible lets Let's just know that what else? They decided, if you will, to get more than they should have, and there was a stench in the village because some folk got greedy. I ain't going to get no help in here. Sometimes, if you don't believe me, sometimes our natural stomach is bigger than our spiritual eye. I ain't going to get no help in here. Sometimes spiritually, amen, or naturally, we want to be here, but spiritually, we know we're only capable of this, but we move on a carnal level and operate outside of the will of God because we're looking for popularity. Somebody ought to shout glory if you will. Amen. And so here when we think about a man, God's eternal plan for us. Uh, we operate in it and cannot avoid it because his eternal plan is that every man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. A man, every man born has got to what? die and then after that the judgment but between our birth and our death we have an opportunity to step into the eternal plan of God we have an opportunity to move in a place amen if we would be so uh, obliged to walk in it to embrace it and to celebrate what God has for us in this portal of time a place where we have an opportunity to get to know God to get to operate and get to be like God get to be transformed and shaped like God by the power of the spirit of God that he gives to us somebody ought to shout glory in here amen and so the reality is that those those of us sometimes uh, who choose to follow God, uh, a man will impact people as we walk this way. Uh, the reality of it is, is that we cannot get confused, uh, but we must learn how that if we walk with God, how we live will confuse the devil and his enemy and his and his and, and, and his army. It will mess up people. Uh, when I think about the history of the apostles uh, and how that they walk with God uh, after the day of Pentecost, it really confused the devil. Uh, they thought that they were drunk but they were full of the Holy Ghost. Uh, after they had gotten the Holy Ghost and folk had got saved just by operating through doctrine and prayer and fellowship and breaking the bread, God added daily to the church such as should be saved. Uh, amen. Folk thought that they would that as they went to the temple day in and day out uh, that people would never be delivered but on their way to the church it confused the devil uh, when they thought that he would get money he got healing in his ankles uh, anybody in here know what I'm talking about uh, you think you come into church if you will uh, to settle your mind but you walk in uh, and God touches and pricks your heart to transform your life forever 
ever. Somebody ought to shout glory in here. Uh, so here, Paul, in the history, uh, when I look at it, Paul said it this way. Uh, he said, if God be for us, uh, he is more than the world against us. Uh, in other words, he said, I want you to know uh, that even though the world has got you backed in the corner, uh, you're going to still win the battle. Uh, I don't care what you think is going on in your life. Uh, I don't care what people are saying about you. Uh, as long as God is on your side, uh, you can have the devil and his whole army uh, get you backed in the corner. You shall win the battle. Uh, somebody ought to shout glory in here. Uh, and so when we come to our text, if you will, uh, this is where we find our Lord. Uh, he decides to take his 12 disciples uh, and one of them is the devil. Uh, tell somebody the devil at a, every now and then uh, has to follow what Jesus said to do. Uh, and I don't know about you, but I don't know if a Peter was with Judas uh, or John was with Judas, uh, but Judas was with somebody, Sister Price. Uh, the devil himself uh, was a walking with somebody uh, that was not going to betray Jesus. Ha, was walking with somebody ha, that believed that Jesus was the Messiah. Ha. But here we find ha, that the 12 went out ha, and before they went out they had two things ha, that they never had before. Ha. So I'm going to talk just for a minute. Ha. And if you got this you ought to say I got it. Ha. The first thing that the Lord said ha, he gave them power. Ha. Does anybody have it? Ha. Somebody say power. Ha. Somebody say power. Ha. Tell somebody, I got power. Ha. I got power. Ha. Power to walk right. Ha. I don't have exusia. Ha. I don't have energy. Ha. But I got dunamis. Ha. I got dynamite power. Ha. Power that breaks yokes. Ha. Power that destroy every fetter. Ha. Power that tears down walls. Ha. Power that open up doors. Ha. Power that, if you will, ha. make the devil run. Now, the Bible says uh, he gave them power. Uh, he gave them dunamis uh, over all the devils. Uh, so let's talk about the devil. Uh, the devil has some unique things. Uh, he ain't nothing. Uh, but he only operates in three areas. Uh, lust of the eye. Uh, make you look at something uh, you can't afford. Uh, look at something you can't handle. Uh, look at something you just can't do without. Uh, and make you lust after it. Ha. Then it's lust of the flesh. Ha. After you see it, ha. you begin to feel ha. some stuff in your flesh ha. that tell you I deserve this. Ha. The sense of entitlement. Ha. Does anybody in there feel somebody owe them something? Ha. That's right. Ha. Don't nobody owe you anything. Ha. You owe it all to the Lord. Ha. Sister Ligon sings that song ha. and I was humming that song in my mind ha. as I sat there in my seat. Ha. I owe it all to the Lord. Ha. Everything that I am, ha. everything that I have, ha. I owe it all to the Lord. Ha. Here they're giving power ha, over all the devils. Ha. When the devil makes you think ha, that you deserve something, ha, you ought to be able to say, I don't deserve anything ha, but for my soul to be saved. Ha. And if the Lord died for that, ha, then that's all I want. Ha. I don't need no fancy car. Ha. I don't need no, if you will, the right clothes. I just need ha, to get to the house of the Lord. So here is where Jesus tells them, I'm giving you power. Power over every devil. I don't care what it is. If you never experienced it before, you got power. If you never had to encounter it before, you got power over it. You ought to look at your neighbor and say, use your power. Stop letting the devil trip you up. Ha. Lose your power. Use your power. Ha. Don't lose your power. Ha. You got power over everything ha, that you have not experienced. Ha. If the devil come to you with a funny spirit, ha, you got power over that spirit. Ha. If the devil comes to you ha, with some crazy idea, ha, you got power over that idea. Ha. 
You might say, I never experienced that before. But the power you got inside has experienced everything. And you ought to be able to tell that thing. You got to get off of me because I got work to do. Somebody ought to shout glory in here. Hallelujah. Here he is. Here he is. He said, not only that, but I'm giving you power to cure every disease. Somebody will just lay your hands on yourself because you can't lay hands on each other. Say, whatever infirmity I got, I got power to cure every disease. Somebody ought to shout glory. I need somebody to tell the devil now, you thought you had me, but I'm about to confuse you. I've been sick long enough. I've been sick in my mind long enough. I've been sick in my heart long enough. I've been sick in my body long enough. I'm getting ready to cast you out. God told me that by his stripes I am healed. So I'm going to walk in my healing. My mental capacity. My physical power. I'm not going to let the devil tell me I can't go on. When the Lord told me I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So here he is. He sends them out. He tells them, when you go out, don't you take nothing with you. You ought to touch your neighbor if you can touch a neighbor. If you can't touch a neighbor, point at a neighbor and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, do you have huh, what you're supposed to have? Huh? Tell your neighbor nothing huh, but your faith in God. Huh? Tell your neighbor huh, nothing huh, but your praise for God. Huh? Tell your neighbor huh, nothing huh, but your worship with God. Huh? Tell your neighbor huh, nothing huh, but your trust in God. Huh? Too many folk huh, are taking too much stuff. Huh? Taking their mama's Bibles, huh? taking their daddy's jackets, huh? taking their uncle's word. Huh? But I heard the Lord say, huh? don't take nothing for your journey. Huh? Somebody ought to shout glory in here. Huh? Don't you take nothing. Huh? Somebody ought to say amen. Huh? Don't take but one coat. Huh? Don't take no script. Huh? Don't take no food. Huh? I'm going to be your supplier. Huh? I'm going to be your provider. Huh? I'm going to be your preserver because we're getting ready to confuse the devil. Somebody shout yes in here. So here he is as they get out the way. They go from town to town. As I get to the close of my message, he gets to go from town to town. The Bible says that the errors start to hear of all the things uh, that Jesus was doing, uh, all the stuff uh, that Jesus was doing. Uh, and somebody said uh, that John the Baptist uh, had rose again. Uh, somebody saw yes. Uh, somebody said uh, maybe it's Elijah uh, that's come back again. Uh, now do you understand uh, when Jesus said, uh, who do men uh, say that I am? Uh, and they say, some says uh, thou art a liar uh, because they couldn't say uh, that he was John the Baptist because uh, John the Baptist's disciples uh, went got his body uh, after his head was taken off uh, so they didn't say John the Baptist uh, but they said some say you Elijah uh, because they watch how you fed 5,000 uh, they watch how you uh, raised the dead uh, and they heard uh, about Elijah uh, Raising the widow's son uh, from the dead. Uh, and how uh, that the widows ate uh, with a hall and bread. Uh, but I stopped by to tell somebody. Uh, it's time to confuse the devil. Uh, you ought to tell the devil uh, that the old you uh, died a long time ago. Uh, somebody shout glory. Uh, he said, well, uh, if John uh, is beheaded uh, because this man if you will 
tear it up. Because in the 23rd chapter of the same book of Luke, the Bible writes a little deeper as Luke writes it out. Because Herod was confused. I know I beheaded John. I know I gave his head on the charger. I know they buried him. I know they picked him up. But I got to see who this Jesus is. Somebody ought to shout glory here. You thought you killed the Messiah. But the Messiah's getting ready to stand in front of you. You ought to tell your problems. You thought you had the old me trapped in this whole body. But today, the new me standing up. Me that got power from on high. Me that's full of the Holy Ghost. Me that's been buried in water. Me that's been washed in the blood of the Lamb. I stop by to tell you. I come to tell you. I'm not what I used to be. I don't do what I used to do. I've been changed by the power of God. You ought to tell somebody. You need to confuse the devil. You need to learn how to hold your peace. Let the Lord fight your battle. You need uh, to learn how uh, to stop putting your hands uh, in the hands uh, of the devil uh, and start putting your hands uh, in God's hands. Uh, tell somebody that'll confuse him. Uh, you've been walking with him so long uh, that you didn't realize uh, that you wasn't in the will of God. Uh, you've been holding on to stuff uh, that's been hindering your progress. Uh, now it's time uh, to let it go uh, and let God uh, have his way. It's time to move that stuff out of the way so the power of God can be magnified. Somebody ought to shout glory. The man Herod was so impacted by what Jesus did and how he did it that he said, I desire to see him. But when he seen him, the Bible said, he was exceedingly glad. He was so glad to see Jesus. But Jesus had already been the pilot. Jesus already been beaten. But watch this. Jesus was getting ready to be beaten. Excuse me. And Herod sent him back to Pilate. Pilate said, y'all ain't messing with me. I'm washing my hands. I ain't messing with this man. Let it be on y'all. But tell somebody, it's one thing to see him. But it's another thing thing to have him on the inside uh, is the one thing uh, to say that you know him uh, but it's another thing to know that you've been through something with him uh, is the one thing to say uh, that he touched you uh, but it's another thing uh, to say that he gave you power uh, it's the one thing to say uh, that I'm born again uh, but it's another thing to say uh, that I've been filled uh, with the Holy Ghost uh, I've been sanctified uh, by the power of God so you might as well confuse the devil and tell the devil in your life today I'm through with you I'm saved I'm a Holy Ghost field I'm not going to let you take my joy refuse to let you take my life I trust in God I live for him I know I can make it if I hold on I know I can get through it, uh, if I trust in him, uh, somebody say confuse uh, the devil. Uh, somebody say, well, uh, pastor, you don't understand. Uh, well, maybe I don't understand. Uh, but the power that you got, uh, it understands. Uh, somebody ought to say yes. Uh, the power that's on the inside, uh, it knows how uh, to choke the very life out of Satan. Uh, somebody ought to shout glory. Uh, you ought to tell yourself, uh, I might be broken, uh, but I'm not defeated. Uh, I might be wounded, uh, but I'm not out of the battle. Uh, I still got some fight left. Uh, and as long as the blood is running warm in my veins, uh, I might as well give God the glory. Uh, I might as well give God the praise. Uh, 
I might as well lift my hands in the midst of my struggle and tell myself that I'm going to live and not die. This is only a storm and I'm going to get through it because after this is over, I still got some life left to live. After this is over, I still got a resurrection to be caught up in. After this is over, I still got some joy. After this is over, I'm still going to be all right. Somebody clap your hands and tell the devil, I'm about to mess you up. I'm about to mess you up. You ought to stand on your feet everywhere. Tell the devil I'm getting ready to mess you up. Tell the devil I'm getting ready to mess you up. Now I want you to think about all that stuff that you holding on to. Need you to think about all of the problems uh, that you can't solve. Uh, I need you to think about uh, all the mess that you done got yourself into. Uh, and now I need you to tell the devil, uh, I'm not going to hold on to this any longer. Uh, I'm putting it in the hands of the Lord. Uh, I'm putting it in the hands of God. Uh, putting my life uh, in God's hands. Uh, putting my life uh, in God's hands, put in my marriage, put in my life, my breakup, my mess up, my sin, put it in God's hands and let him cover it by the blood. And when he covers it, I'm going to have power to go forward. The devil won't have nothing to hang over your head. Somebody ought to say, get away. Back up, Satan. I'm not going to let you hold my problems over my head. They're under the blood. They're covered by Jesus. I'm not going to let you take my life. Herod, I wish I had some people really ready to give up. The devil got folk tied up. Got folk tied up. They believe that what just happened going to fix the world. And I told Sister Beth this morning, I think I told Evangelist Preston, Biden can't fix what God got planned. Trump wouldn't have fixed it either. The church needs to be lightening our load and laying aside every weight and every sin which do it so easily beset us. Stop carrying stuff. We're carrying too much. That's why the devil ain't confused. He's like, oh, yeah, they're carrying exactly what I want them to carry. They're carrying that hatred. Yeah, they're carrying that, they carrying that thing that, that I can fix it mentality. They carrying that pride. That's what I want them to carry. As long as they carrying that, I keep them out of keep them on the fringes, Sister Price. I keep them on the fringes of God's will, because see, pride won't let me move into God's will. If I can keep them on the fringes, when the going get tough, they ain't gonna know how to get to God. When the going get tough, they gonna bury their head in the sand. And wait for the storm to pass. But when they pull their head out the sand, they're going to be right in the middle of that storm. It's time to confuse him. Herod was perplexed. He said, I killed John. So how can this guy do these works that John was doing? You killed John. You didn't kill the Messiah. You didn't kill the Savior. Because no man can take his life. I lay it down. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. And the same power. No man. God can't make you serve him. You got to lay down your life for him. He ain't going to make you serve him. You got, to, you got to rip it off. In the garden, he had to rip off himself. Y'all think it was easy? In the garden, he had to rip off the humanity. 
so that he could die for you. And you got to rip off some humanity so you can die for him. Not that you have to die to save him, but you got to lose your life to gain it. We sitting in here. We're at home. We're in the church. We're on our jobs. We're growing up. We're teenagers. 18, 19, going on 20. And the reality of it is you better learn how to live by your faith. Because mom and dad ain't going to always be around. You better learn how to pray. Because they end up, watch this, sometimes you can't get to no saint. It confused him that the devil was falling from the sky like lightning. It confused him that the Pharisees were confused. These are the smartest intellectual, spiritual minds on the planet. How is it that one man can mess them up so badly? Because he's not a man. He is God. The reality of it is my brothers and my sisters, the power that we have. When we walk around here and we placate the devil. We don't confuse him. When we play into his hands. We don't confuse him. But when we tell the devil by our actions and not just by our words that we're going to lay this stuff down because we can't fix it. I can't fix what the devil tore up. The devil tore it up because God gave him the power to tear it up. I ain't going to get no help. Maybe because I wasn't focused on God enough. So now that I get focused on God, God may put it back together again. My life, your lives, must be approached with the mindset that I may not live through tomorrow. I got to get it right today. And I don't care where the devil got you, you can come out. But it's your choice. Will you operate in the will of God? Or will you choose to play where you are now? Where you're playing on that field is very safe and comfortable. Because you feel good that you can speak in tongues every now and then when you pray. But to be honest with you, you're really struggling in your heart, fighting with Satan. He wants you to do stuff that you really like doing, but the Lord is telling you, let that thing go. And to let it go is more painful than to fight. Uh-oh. Then the devil is telling you, don't fight for it. Just walk away. And God is telling you to fight for it. Did that make sense? The reality of it is, my brothers, you need to know who voice you're listening to. My sisters, you need to know who you're listening to. Yeah, young people, she fine, he fine. But is that the voice of God that you need to hear? Is that the voice? Because the devil needs to be confused. He needs to be confused. You need to get him, you need to get him confused real fast. Because if you play in the games that you think you're going to escape in the end, you better talk to somebody who died when they thought they would have time. Lord, let me go back and tell my brothers what they need to do. Everybody got their moment. Hell has enlarged itself, and it's doing it through, through the church. The falling away is not happening in the world. It's happening in the church. We have more faith in an election process than we do in the election that God pulled you out of darkness into light. We have more confidence in what the world can do than we do what God wants to do. Let us bow our heads. Father, we thank you today. We are in a place that we have the power and the energy to literally confuse Satan. 
and get him off of our backs, out of our homes, out of our jobs, out of our lives. But it's going to require each and every one of us to approach the remainder of this day and the remainder of our lives in the mindset that we will do nothing contrary to your word. As painful as it may seem, relationships that are not productive will have to be broken. People in our lives that are not building us up in righteousness and holiness can no longer have a place. Evil speech, contrary behavior, can no longer be a part of who we are. Lying, cheating, and sin can no longer be a part of our lives. We must make a stand that we're going to live for you day in and day out. Regardless of what people may think about us, regardless of who they are looking for, We must represent Christ in everything we do. The devil has confused the church because we have taken on too much of the world and we need to let the world go and pick up more of Christ. We need to understand that as we go forward in these few years we have left, that we gird the loins of our minds. We put on the whole arm of God. We can no longer walk in a place of doubt and fear. We can no longer walk in entitlement. We must walk humbly and submissively before you so that the power that you give us might be magnified through our humility. We cannot have our own mind, nor can we have our own revelation. But our revelation must be based upon the revelation that has been given to us. We got to avoid false teachers and false doctrine. We've got to hold to that which has been delivered unto us. and Let no man take it. We're in a time, Lord, where church is not church as it normally used to be. Now is the time that the word of God must be fulfilled in our life. That the word that we have hid in our hearts, that we might not sin against thee. Father, we ask in Jesus' name, strengthen every one of us. Strengthen every viewer. Touch their minds. Touch their hearts. Somebody needs to be saved. Needs to be water baptized. Needs to be filled with God's spirit. Someone God needs it. But they're holding on to something. I don't know what it is. But you can expose it. And we're praying God expose what it is. That's hindering them from confusing the devil, breaking the chains, breaking those yokes that have them bound. Sometimes what we think may be best may not be best for us. And sometimes God has to tear up something in order to build it up right. So, Father, we're asking you, strengthen our sisters, who are viewing, young men, young women, who are viewing, touch their minds, strengthen them, tear down what you don't want, and help them to build it up again. Help them to choose to follow you. Help them to choose to lean on you. Help them to choose to trust in you. Father, this is our prayer today. Save my brother. Fill him with your spirit, O God. 
save my sister, cause her to come to be born again. Reach, Lord, that drug addict son or daughter, that wayward husband or wife, and save from the uttermost. In the name of the Lord Jesus, and cause them, Lord, through the power that you give to live a strong life that the devil will be confused. In Jesus' name, put your hands together and give God praise.